Hello and welcome to week seven. Um, I want to start out by saying that overall the first exam went really well for most people. Um, as you can see right down here in this little chart, um, I put a representation of the scores as of today, which is Sunday evening, um, October 3rd. So it was actually a really healthy bell curve leaning more towards the positive end. So way to go on that. Um, so this week, moving forward, we're going to devote our time to just one system, one chapter, one homework assignment, one video, one PowerPoint, and it's going to be on female reproduction. I've also included um, another video this week, which is actually one of the first, actually the first video of its kind, which came out maybe when you weren't born yet or when your parents were born. So make sure to check that out. And um, so here we go. I'll give you a little brief overview. We'll walk through a couple things together and then I'll set you loose. Our overview for week seven is as follows. You'll notice that I haven't quite embedded the video link right here because I'm still making it, but that's where it will go. So that's the first thing you want to start out with is watching this video. And you'll notice down in the assignment section right down here that I tell you to watch the video by midweek. And I mean, that's a soft due date, but I do want you to get it done earlier on in the week so that you know what is happening this week. And then I placed all of the other due dates as next Sunday. They can definitely be completed prior to next Sunday. Those are just guidelines. So let's take a quick look here at the exercises for this week. All right, so nothing out of the ordinary. So for chapter eight, female reproduction, there are some pages in your textbook to read, which is the entire chapter as well as the exercises and then the answers that go with them. That's for your practice. I have also included a PowerPoint for chapter eight and then sliding down here to this week's homework assignment, right about there, you'll see that I have given you a scholarly article from a peer reviewed journal of science. So the article's name is The Role of Oxidative Stress on Female Reproduction. It is from a 2005 publication of Reproductive Biology and Endocrinology Journal. And the reason I'm giving it to you is so that, there's a couple reasons. One is so that you become more familiar with medical terminology in a really formal sense of this peer-reviewed journal. Um, this is elevated writing, um, very terminological, very specific, and it can intimidate people. But I think you'll be surprised to find, pleasantly surprised to see that you actually recognize a lot of the terminology they're using. So what you're going to do down here is right there, full screen that document. That's the actual article itself. And back up in the description here, you'll see that you're only going to look at and dissect or define the roots of the yellow highlighted terms. There are 23 of them and they are found only in the abstract of this paper. So you do not need to read the entire paper, just the abstract. And then you're going to open up either a Word document or an Excel file, type each of those yellow terms, and then break them into prefixes, suffixes, and or combining forms using hyphens on the prefixes and suffixes. So all of that being said, one of the other reasons why I wanted you to read this journal article is so that you get more practice with something called a primary source. So as people of science, as scientists, it is vital that you are scientifically literate. And what that means is that you can actually read um, primary sources which come directly from the scientists or writers who studied that thing. And you can interpret for yourself based on your education, what they're trying to say. So a primary source is in contrast to a secondary source. That would be things like, you know, newspapers and magazines and any third party author um, or company or organization that is taking an author's thoughts and interpreting them and um, deducing what that person was saying. So by the time you read that information, it's already gone through a filter or two. And so what I want you to do with this article is, you know, use your own um, reasoning and understanding to see what these scientists are saying um, about female reproduction. 
So I think it's a really valuable to skill to have, especially to, in today's day and age, um, not just to, you know, watch the news and read an article in a magazine, but to look at the actual original words of the work that was done by these scientists, because being able to convey your work and then have someone else um, who is also educated be able to understand it is really, really vital in um, spreading ideas and communicating in the scientific community at large. All right, so the last thing for you this week is a video that Disney put out in 1946. It's actually called The Story of Menstruation, and it's thought to be the first movie that used the word vagina. So it's an informative piece um, that was shown to high schoolers in the 1940s, and although it is antiquated, the information is still applicable to us today. All right, so all of that being said, I will have your Chapter 7 homework assignments graded this week. And you will, um, I believe I have it set so that you can see your exam scores um, and what you got right and wrong after the exam closes tonight, which now that you're seeing this, this will be Monday, so you should be able to see those things. If not, let me know. And if you got five questions or less wrong, I can email you those answers if you ask me for them. If you got more than five questions wrong, then we should meet in person to go over the correct answers to those questions. So with that, um, enjoy this awesome weather. Fall is definitely my favorite season, and looking at the U.S. foliage calculator, we are almost at peak time for fall colors. So get out and enjoy those while we still have them, and best wishes for a great week. As always, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope to um, hear from you or maybe even see you soon if you can stop by. Have a good one. Bye.